Hello there. I'm glad you can make it. My creator is currently getting everything together. He asked me to inform you if the content helps you. Consider hitting that subscribe button and tapping on the like button. I don't understand the importance of this. I guess it's a human thing. Anyways, check out the hologram. My creator should be back momentarily. Hello and welcome back everyone. I'm Sacred Sage and I'm going to show you guys how to export morphs from DAS 3D to CC4 and iClone 8. It can be quite the headache. I had to watch and learn from several people that know a lot more than me to be able to do this. So instead of watching several videos, I'm basically combining them all into one. Um, some people that I watch that are really good with iClone and CC4 is Zero Calvin and Mike Kelly. That's that's my go-to for whenever I come across a problem. So if you're ever wondering where I get my information, more than likely it's one of those two people unless I stumble across it myself, which then I try to share. Anyways, let's go ahead and jump in to Daz here and get this squared away. So first off, we got our model there. And all we're going to do in Daz really is this is a base model. So no changes. This is just my character on the normal, right? And th these morphs will work on any character, not just the Daz character too, just to be clear. So let's go ahead and we're going to export this. And I am going to go into temp. I have a folder here. And I'm going to name this oops, base model. So this lets me know that this is just a pure basic model. Hit accept. Oh, I probably should have turned off that. Okay, well, it didn't take too long. Now what we're going to do is the morph that we want. So in this case, I'm just going to do a nose morph. So poop maker have a pointy nose like Pinocchio over here lying her ass off. So let's go ahead and export and I will just say nose morph and we're going to save that as well. I'll go ahead and well, I might as well keep it to the same. Screw it. All right, now we are done in Daz. So that's saved, that's done. Now we're gonna go over to doop -doo, CC4. Now there's a couple different ways you can do this. But first and foremost, we have to get our key. So let's go ahead and transform this character and desktop. Well, yeah, temp base model. So let's go ahead and open the base model. Uh, I'm just doing this for the morph, so I don't need to bake any texture. So we're just going to click on basic just so it doesn't take as long. Just click OK. And here's our model. Boom. So this is our base model. So what we're going to do is we're going to file. And we're going to export and then avatar and the reason why we're exporting and avataring the base model even though we have it on fbx this gives us the key so if i tried to use the other file it wouldn't have the fbx key this will have the fbx key so we're going to export and go back into my temp file again And this is going to be base model with key. Okay, so now we're going to transform this character to the, uh, the nose morph, right? So we're going to open this, click on basic again. Click OK. All right. Now you can tell the 
<laughs> that nose. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, let's go into create and we're going to do a morph slider editor, right? So we're going to click on that and it brings up this window. Now this is going to be the name of the morph. I'm just going to name it nose morph. That's all I'm going to do. Now we can set to get the category on where it's going to be located at. Since it's our face, I'm going to go with the head, right? So let's put it on the head. And there's a couple places you can use the head, body, eyes, teeth, eyelashes, nails. Go with the head. Now, this is the sub pass. So if you just don't want it laying around in the head, like um, we, let's say uh, created morphs. Now it'll put it in actor head created morph. So I don't like to have all my morphs just straight down. I like to have them organized. So I do this. The morph value is... Well, what you would think, it starts at 0 or 100. Now, you can change this to negative 100, and that will bring this model's nose back to normal. I'll show you in a second. But for the most part, you just need to have it at 0. Unless you're doing something like, um, let's say, breasts moving left and right, that might be a good reason to have negative 100 and 100. But if you're just applying some sort of effect in this case a weird ass nose you can keep it at zero so the source and the target morph so our target morph is the is the current one so this is what we're at right here then we want to do file for the source because we're trying to whoop, we're trying to uh, target for the the one that we just saved, right? So let's go to temp, base model with key. As you can tell, you cannot see base model, even though it is an FBX because it doesn't have an FBX key. So that's why we had to save the base model. Now, alternatively, we could have done it in the opposite way. The reason why I do it this way is because let's say you're trying to transfer over 50 morphs, right? You can just save this one base key and just keep on trying to and, and just keep on targeting that. So you just import the morph and do it this way and it saves the morph rather than saving 50 other morphs with an FBX key. This is just simpler to do. So we're going to go ahead and open that. And then I believe that is it. You can add a thumbnail if you wanted to get a picture of it. You can get a close-up, render it, and then pick a thumbnail. Uh, in this case, I'm not too worried about it. And then you click OK. And now it's going to create that morph. So if we go over to Morphs, you can see Nose Morph, and it's in Created Morphs. I'm not sure why I put it in Expressions, but it did. So here's Created Morphs. Boop. Now... As you can tell, it just makes it worse, right? But once we load in a different character, let's bring back in Camilla, right? Replace all. And we're going to load Camilla in because we can actually use this morph on any character. It does not have to be this Daz ugly character that we imported, right? So here is our Camilla character. And then we're going to go to... When I say it was it was under, uh, oh here it is, created morphs. And now when we do the, the nose morph, it works for her as well. So it's not limited to just the Daz character. So the next step, trying to get this over into iClone 8. Now iClone 8 is a pain in the ass. That's the easiest way to put it. I do not, I do not understand why you just cannot... Just use all the morphs that you got in CC4 and iClone 8. If you have iClone 8 and you have CC4, there should be no reason why you cannot just pull over all the morphs and use them in iClone 8. It is absolutely ridiculous in, in my... I just, I just don't see a reason why you would not want that together, right? So we got to do it a backwards way, which is retarded, but whatever. You got to do what you got to do. So let's go ahead and import this character... Uh, over to iClone, and we're going to hop over here in iClone. Actually, I need to, I forgot a step. Let's go ahead and delete her. First things first, I came across an um, 
a problem when doing the morphs. And I think it's because of the animation, because once I cleared out everything and zeroed everything out, I didn't have near the trouble. So we w down here, go to remove zero animation all, and it, it'll put her in a T pose, as you can tell right now. And now we are going to import this character over into iClone 8. And ultimately what we're going to do is just bring this character over into uh Morph Creator. So if we go into Morph Animator, as you can tell, there are no, absolutely zero uh, morphs. So let's go into Morph Creator. And it's going to open up another window. And this is how you create the actual morphs. So while this is loading up, let's go back over to CC4. I am going to apply that nose morph and going to file export and there's a couple ways you can do this the what would be the best way would be the avatar because it just applies that morph to that part of the body but unfortunately when i was doing my morphs it it just caused so much trouble i just finally said screw it it might work like one out of ten times so i started exporting it with obj character with current pose and you just keep all this the same Y up none of that and just click OK and then we're gonna just gonna save this so let's go back to our temp file and boom and then we're gonna name this uh, nose up that's all I'm gonna name nose up click Save all right so let's go back over here now and we're gonna as you can tell character looks a lot different in the morph creator so what we're going to do now is go to file uh, import actually we don't even have to do that we can just click right here you can do import morph target or you can just click on this plus button now when you oops, let's find our file first when you import this <clears throat> It is going to create a lot of morphs because it does it for, oh, it didn't for this one. Okay, so normally when you do a morph, it will apply a morph to everything. So it would apply it to the bra, it would apply it to the underwear, the character, and if it, if it affects the teeth or the eyes, it will affect that as well. Since this is just the nose, it did not do that. So as you can tell, there goes the nose. So what you do. There's a couple different ways that you can do this. So, and this is why I have such a problem and a complaint with the iClone 8 morphs. That you should be able to use all of them in CC4 because if you bring a character over into iClone, let's say you're doing a long-term project. You can't just, oh, I'm going to update this morph to iClone. Because what it'll do is, if you have any morphs on that character in iClone 8, they get wiped out and gets replaced by this one morph. If you have hundreds of morphs on that character, you got to think, am I going to be using those? So, it's always safe to have a character that has all of your morphs, just in case you need them, right? So, if I go to File, and I save this, you can tell I have one that says... Final morphs, don't delete. All morphs, all morphs. So I literally have all the morphs that I created on this file right here. In this case, I'm not going to do that, but I'm just forewarning you and telling you, save all your morphs on one character. And then we can just go, bloop, and we update it. And this will work on any character as well. I can bring in a different model and this will work on that model so let's go back over here into iClone and let's get up close to see that big honker that she has going on morph animator and as you can tell there is the nose up so here is here here comes the problem right so let's say you want to make another morph so let's delete her Let's bring her nose back down, and we are going to bring her back over to iClone. We're going to close this down, 
Oh no, let's let's keep this model right here. And this is why you want to save it as well. So, oh look, there's a model. I'm 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 making a morph. So we are going to go into Morph Creator. And when you plop it into Morph Creator, do you want to say the project? I'm just gonna say no for this instance. And now you no longer have the morph, right? So that's why you want to have a character with all the morphs. So if you go into this, right, then you can just click load and then load that character that already has all your morphs. When you do, and this is another thing that I don't understand with the 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 character creator. And let's go ahead and I'm going to run through this again real quick just to just to show you. Actually, I can just do it right here. So let's go ahead and add the nose up, open. And I'm gonna I'm gonna do this just to show you because it, it kind of confused me at first. So here it is, the nose up, bam. Okay, so let's go ahead and file, save, and I'm just gonna name this as uh yeah, that's fine, Camellia. It's gonna create a thumbnail, takes it a minute. All right, so let's go ahead and say that you're not in this. Go ahead and close out of that. And I clone, go back into Morph Creator. It's gonna bring it back. She's gonna be in the T pose naturally, <clears throat> but you don't wanna use that. You wanna use your character that has all the morphs, right? So when you load the character, What's going to happen is this character is no longer going to be in the T pose. I do not understand why. I do not know why. I just, I, I don't get it. But what you can do, and you want it to be in the T pose because you want to make sure that all your morphs are done in the same exact pose and way so that you have the least amount of problems because the more stuff that moves, the more issues you're going to have. There's going to be something that doesn't move that you uh, that moves that you don't want to have moved and all sorts of stuff, right? So let's go ahead and take this character and then you can update this character to the iClone. This is the character that has all your morphs, right? And then you go back over here to iClone and it's going to, it's updating that morph. It is now it is now done. Then you can go back into Morph Creator and it's going to load in that character. And it'll be back in the T pose with all of your morphs. So once you get and and that Again, stupid. All this can be avoided just by using the morphs that you already have in CC4. I don't know why Real Illusion does not just make it interchangeable. I understand it's two different programs. If you're in iClone 8, oh look, I don't see any morphs. Okay, cool. You don't get no morphs. You can make your own morphs the old way like this. Oh look, I have CC4. Let me... Which morphs do you want in on this character? It, I don't, it, whatever. As you can tell, it, it really frustrates me because I spent hundreds of hours getting morphs over that I need for a thing that I already have over on another damn program. Anyways, I hope this video helped you out. If it did, leave a like, comment, subscribe, show some love, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.